In the early 1960s, four national organizations assumed leadership roles in the struggle for civil rights. The NAACP, SNCC, CORE, and the SCLC. They competed, cooperated, argued, agreed, retreated, and advanced with different priorities, agendas, and strategies. But for over four years in Mississippi, in the midst of the nation's struggle for social justice, they worked together, sometimes hesitantly, but powerfully, to affect the course of history. This building is the epicenter where this activism was coordinated. 1961 was a watershed year for the escalating civil rights movement in Mississippi. Citizen activism increased, especially among young people, led principally by the NAACP's field secretary, Medgar Evers, and President Dr. Aaron Henry. As hundreds of Freedom Riders were arrested and imprisoned, Evers, Henry, and other black leaders in Mississippi asked for and were granted a meeting with Governor Ross Barnett. To signal their solidarity, they called their group the Council of Federated Organizations. They presented their case to Barnett, opposing segregation and condemning poverty. And although they made little headway in influencing the governor, the idea of strength and unity was established. The NAACP already had a stronghold in Mississippi, but intensifying activity attracted the participation of CORE, SNCC, and the SCLC. Between 1962 and 1964, members of these organizations came to the state to apply new methods, organize and train local people, and respond to the escalating oppression and violence throughout the state. To help coordinate the diverse efforts and involve local civil rights groups, Henry of the NAACP, Bob Moses of SNCC, Tom Gaither of CORE, and other leaders met in Clarksdale to re-energize and reorganize COFO in February 1962. They elected officers, naming Henry president Moses, Program Director, and Dave Dennis of CORE, Assistant Program Director. SNCC has tried to help develop in Mississippi a, a council of federated organizations for the last two years to have a, a, an organization which was based in the state which the people themselves could identify with as their own. And the massive summer project is being sponsored by this organization and all the major civil rights organizations are participating in it. That's CORE, the NAACP, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Moses is speaking of the Mississippi Summer Project, which COFO would coordinate in 1964. The groundwork had been laid with the opening of a state COFO office on John R. Lynch Street in Jackson the previous year linking local community activists with civil rights workers. It was a busy hub, bustling with volunteers, a small paid staff, and visiting luminaries. Work included educational and social welfare projects, like food and clothing drives. But the primary focus was on black voter registration activities, door-to-door -door education, courthouse demonstrations, and mass meetings. In the fall of 1963, a few months after the assassination of Megger Evers, COFO sponsored a freedom vote, a symbolic statewide initiative to demonstrate that blacks wanted to vote and would do so. Some 80,000 people cast ballots in the mock election for Dr. Aaron Henry for governor and Reverend Ed King, the white Tougaloo College chaplain, for lieutenant governor. This set the stage for more aggressive attention to political enfranchisement. As the momentum built toward the summer of 1964, Bob Moses described what COFO had planned. We hope to, to send into Mississippi this summer upwards of 1,000 teachers, ministers, lawyers, and students from all around the country 
who will engage in what we're calling freedom schools, community center programs, voter registration activity, research work, work in the white communities, and in general, uh, uh, a program designed to get the country to actually take a look at Mississippi, what she is, what kind of state she is, what kind of political system you have there, and to really examine it, and to, to try and force, if possible, some real change in that state, uh, and specifically by 1964 to get the vote. COFO's Freedom Schools gave children a summer of fun-filled recreation and exposure to new ideas and experiences. Freedom Schools also gave educational opportunities to adults. 1964 was highlighted by positive experiences for the Freedom School workers and students, but it was also marked by the tragedy of the deaths of James Cheney, Andrew Goodman, and Michael Schwerner three young men who had dedicated themselves to spending Freedom Summer in voter registration. Their vicious murders were a chilling reminder to the workers at the COFO headquarters of the climate of intimidation and fear that was all too real to black citizens in Mississippi. Are you scared? Yes, I'm very much afraid. Everyone here is. But we knew before we came down something about what it's going to be like, and I don't know of anybody that's turning back because of things like this that happened. The training that the summer workers had received prepared them for coming to Mississippi, and the reality did not diminish their resolve. I'm down here because I believe that my freedom is very much entangled with the freedom of every other man, and that if another man's not free, then I'm not free. So I'm fighting for my own freedom here. Political action on another front occurred at the April 1964 State COFO meeting with the organization of the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. Its purpose, to challenge the state's regular Democratic Party for seating at the National Party's summer convention. The regular Democrats refused to allow blacks to participate and did not support the National Party. At its August convention, Freedom Democratic Party Chairman Aaron Henry explained. We are contending that we are the bona fide Democrats of Mississippi. We will support the platform of the party. We will support the nominees and we'll work for the election. And this is something that the Mississippi Democratic Party has not done, has not said it will do now, and we know that they will not do. And we don't see how the National Party can afford to overlook people who are with them, who support the platform, the party, and the nominee. Veteran civil rights leader Ella Baker, who worked with the NAACP, SNCC, CORE, and the SCLC, addressed the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party's first convention. I consider this assemblage an assemblage of people who, yes, have come through the wilderness of tears, who, yes, have come through the beating, the harassment, the brutalization that are characteristic not only of Mississippi, but unfortunately characteristic of too many of our areas in America. The day has come when racism must be banished from the political body politic of our country and people. This is a reaffirmation of your determination to see to it that the right of the governed to elect those who govern them is maintained here in this state. Keep on a walking, keep on a talking, marching up the street on land. Disappointments were challenging. The Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party was not seated at the National Convention in 1964. But Mrs. Fannie Lou Hamer riveted the attention of the nation on the situation in Mississippi, and change was on the horizon. With dedicated volunteers and patchwork funding from a variety of sources, COFO held itself together for another year. But in the wake of the disappointments and challenges of Freedom Summer, and with growing conflict over issues of leadership and programming, the Council of Federated Organizations disbanded in spring 1965. Nevertheless, there is no doubt about COFO's significant legacy. 
The passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act in 1965 signaled that the thoughtful, if difficult, collaboration that took place in this building made a difference. Grassroots leadership development, community organizing skills, and an empowered electorate would make their mark in Mississippi for generations to come. Freedom's taking slavery's place. Fight on, little children. Fight on. 